Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews. So, I just went to Walmart to grab a few things, some food and all that fun stuff to restock my house a little bit. And, while I was there, I decided of course to check out the Jurassic World section. And lo and behold, there was the Edmontosaurus just sitting there waiting for me to buy it. So I did just that, and I am super psyched now to have it here for us to finally look at and get a good review of this figure. You can see the box is the typical primal attack box, nothing new, nothing amazing there. We can already hear the Edmontosaurus complaining a little bit there. As I flipped it around, apparently it doesn't like that. You can also see on the back of the box a few little illustrations kind of showing the movement of the figure and then down here the Cryolophosaurus and Triceratops which I do believe are the other two sound strikes in this wave. They now have cut out the Pteranodon so if you haven't picked up the Pteranodon maybe go ahead and do that now because I don't know entirely if that is included in the new case assortment of the sound strike figures. But without further ado let's break this out of the box and take a look at it. So here is our Edmontosaurus. And straight away, I must say that I actually really quite like it a lot more in person than I was expecting to as far as the paint scheme goes. I had seen a few images of other people that had received it online and I wasn't super sold on the actual paint scheme that they had gone with, but in person I actually like it quite a bit more than I was expecting to, which is pretty surprising. I thought I was finally going to find a Mattel figure that I wasn't entirely happy with, but as always, they tend to surprise me when it comes to actually seeing the figure in person. More often than not, I usually like it a lot more in person. But let's go ahead, get a closer look at this wonderful looking Edmontosaurus figure right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see the head sculpt definitely does look really quite nice as far as the skin texture goes. You can even see some really nice scaling there in the palette of our Edmontosaurus. Beautiful nostrils sculpted out up there on the snout area, really nicely sculpted out beak like we of course would expect to see here on a Hadrosaur. And you can see that the detailing within the beak is actually really quite nice as well. The eyes are painted with a yellowish color and for the most part both of the eyes of my figure appear to have been placed quite nicely. So that is definitely a plus in comparison to some of the previous releases. From the Mattel line, you can also see that as far as the coloration of the face, it's got a really nice light blue here for the majority of the face and then a darker blue that kind of stripes through in certain areas. And I really do think that that color scheme they've gone with looks really cool, definitely a really nice touch. You can also see something that is a fairly newer addition to Edmontosaurus and that is the crest up here on the top of the head, so that's really cool to see that Mattel has gone ahead and added that to it. The head crest is primarily a yellowish coloration with a little squiggly type of a design. The design looks pretty similar on both sides, pretty much the same I would say. Really, really nice detailing. You can get a beautiful idea and a sense of the throat of the Edmontosaurus right there. Really nice skin texture as we start to move down into the neck area. Lots of creasing all throughout the skin here of the neck area. Nice creasing here as well. You've got a few little bumps up here on the back, a few little like kind of osteoderm like ridges. And then as we come down here into the shoulder area, you can again see the really nice skin texture of our Edmontosaurus. Beautiful skin detail on this figure, which I would expect no less from a Mattel figure. As we move down into the legs, lots of really nice creasing going on in the skin. Again, beautiful elbow right there in the back of the front leg here. Moving down into the feet, you can see that the foot sculpt looks pretty good for the most part. Really nicely sculpted out nails and everything. However, I do believe that uh, I think as of last year in North Dakota, they found a very nicely fossilized front leg of the Edmontosaurus. And as it appears, they actually seem to have had hooves on their feet instead of like this style of like a foot with toes and nails and everything. It's more of like a hoof on the feet. And I don't know for sure if we have established that all Hadrosaurus have had that. But it definitely does appear that Edmontosaurus itself does have it. So the foot sculpt is a bit outdated as far as that goes. As we lead back into the body, the skin detail also looks really good up here on the back. And again, you can kind of see like some ridges that run along the spinal column there. They do look really, really nice. You can see generally the spinal column of the dinosaur beautifully portrayed right there. As we come down into the rear leg, really nice muscle tone, very nicely elaborated, beautiful, beautiful skin texture in the thigh area. Moving down into the calf, really muscular calf there. You've got the kneecap a little bit there, 
present in the front and then this area is just unreasonable. I don't understand what happened here and I've actually seen quite a few people complaining about this and that is if we move the leg here and the Edmontosaurus can take a break from complaining you'll see that the Edmontosaurus has way too many toes back here and I don't understand why they chose to give it four toes because we know Edmontosaurus absolutely did not have four toes. Maybe we can sometimes let things like this slide because technically the Jurassic World dinosaurs are not full-blown dinosaurs, they're hybrids all together because none of them are full dinosaurs, none of them have the actual full dinosaur strain of DNA, but this for some reason is just very strange to me that Mattel decided to do this and I really think that it does not help the figure in any way, it actually gives it kind of an ugly appearance due to this very strange idea they had here with adding four toes, however, at least the nails are painted here on the rear foot and that's a really big plus as far as I'm concerned. So a huge negative but also a huge plus back here with the rear foot. If only we could have just had them actually sculpt out the three toes this would have been really nicely done. Moving back up here into the tail you've got some more really nice creases of the skin right here behind the leg kind of insinuating some of the movement there with the leg. And as we move out the length of the tail, the tail does look really quite nice, beautiful skin texture as we lead out the length of the tail and again some more of those ridges that run along the spinal column. If we take a look at the opposing side, you're probably not going to see too much difference because again most Mattel figures are fairly neutral as far as the detailing goes on one side in comparison to the other. Beautiful blues up here on the face once again. And then as we move down, you can again see the nice sculpting of the throat, beautiful creasing in the skin right there again. Really nice skin texture all throughout the body. It has almost kind of like a chunky type of an appearance to it a little bit there. Definitely a very beefy animal. The foot sculpt on this side is ever so different from the other side. As the other side's more planted, this one seems to be maybe taking a step forward, but it also looks really nicely done. Again, outdated as far as the front foot there, but regardless, it still looks quite nice for what this figure is. And as we move back here into the thigh, once again, the thigh and calf look really good as far as the detailing goes. Kneecap, once again, slightly present there. Unfortunately, once again, we have four toes on this side, which absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. But we do have the nails painted, which is a plus, and it will always be a plus. Now, if only we could get Mattel to always paint the nails of all of their figures, we would be much better off. And then leading out into the rest of the tail, once again, really nice detailing as we lead out the tail. The underside also sports some beautiful sculpt and detail throughout. And if you would like to add this to your collection of Jurassic Facts figures, there is the scan code right there. And I think the paint scheme actually looks, like I said earlier in the review, really quite nice in person. I really do think that it was a pretty good choice as far as the paint scheme goes. So definitely kudos to Mattel for that because it's different than what we've seen previously from pretty much any of their figures. So. That is definitely really, really nice. So there are some really nice aspects about the figure and some not so nice aspects about the figure. But let's go ahead and get a look at the action feature and listen to the sounds, I guess, a little bit more since he doesn't want to stop doing it himself and then get a size. So as far as articulation goes, we've got the articulation of the neck and the tail. You can see the two moving at the same time and that is due to the action feature. It kind of looks like we should have had maybe a little bit of articulation right here where the head connects to the neck but unfortunately we don't. That's just now the area where the head connected to the neck, but it just sort of looks like we should have had some articulation there. Then when we move down to the front leg here, we've got, of course, the ability to go forward and back and then out away from the body as well. The rear legs can, of course, go forward and back really nicely, and then the legs can move out away from the body pretty much just like usual. And then I did state already that the tail is articulated, and that is because the action feature is pretty much your usual action feature. When it comes to these sound strike figures, and you're gonna take the tail here. And as you can tell, it operates the head and moves the head all around. You can also hear the noises. which as far as I'm concerned does not sound like a hadrosaur, does not sound like a herbivore even, sounds definitely like a predator of some kind, but... Yeah, that is absolutely not a herbivore noise. I don't know why they chose to do that. They should have given this a very cool hadrosaur sound, similar to what we had heard on the older Kenner 
Parasaurolophus, something like that would have been a great noise for this Edmontosaurus. However, they chose not to do that. I don't know why they did that either, so there are definitely quite a few downsides with this figure. As far as the size goes, from the head to the tip of the tail, you are looking at about 11 and 3 quarter inches or around 30 centimeters, and for a height to the top of the crest, about 4 and a half inches or 11 and a half centimeters, almost 12, eh, more like 12 centimeters. And then to the tip of the tail, you're looking at about 4 and a quarter inches or around 11 centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon, and I do apologize. If the glare from the window is making it difficult to see these figures right now, as it is very sunny currently here, which is a nice change of pace, but you can definitely see next to these figures that the Edmontosaurus pretty much sits right in the same size range as all of the previous Soundstrike figures, similar to the Parasaurolophus if we're going to talk Hadrosaurs, but that definitely means that it's a really nicely sized figure. So this Primal Attack Mattel Soundstrike Jurassic World Edmontosaurus is really nice, but not without problems, that is for sure. If we take scientific accuracy and throw that straight out the window, which is something you can do when it comes to the Jurassic World figures, then maybe you can accept this as a very accurate style Jurassic World Edmontosaurus. However, as far as actual scientific accuracy goes, we clearly know that this is not accurate. It was nice of them to actually add the crest up there on the head because that's sort of a newer aspect to Edmontosaurus, but as far as the front foot goes, we now know after last year that the front of the Edmontosaurus would have had hooves, not like the feet that you see here. So, of course that area is incorrect, but if we also look at the rear feet, like we had stated earlier, four toes, I don't understand why they did that at all. It's just really baffling to me. I, it just doesn't make any sense why they would have done that unless they just totally overlooked the scientific aspect of Edmontosaurus, which I feel like Mattel does tend to try to do their best job as far as accuracy goes, but also in the Jurassic World style. But this one just, there's no reason really for adding four toes. It just doesn't make sense and I don't know why they did it. But if we can get past the pretty much the feet of both the front and back legs and take a look at the actual sculpting of the Edmontosaurus, I think it is really, really nicely sculpted as far as things like the detailing of the figure, the small minute detailing like the skin texture, and just the head sculpt in general is beautifully done, along with that crest up on the head. And the colors of the figure are also really quite nicely done. Again, I didn't expect to like them as much as I did in person. The yellow crest was something, along with the actual the light blue on the face, was something that I was always kind of a big fan of. Immediately from seeing the figure, I definitely really did like that aspect of the figure, but it was kind of like this striping and then the darker blue playing off of that like beige type color that is the primary body color there. I wasn't super sold on and in fact looking at it now it almost looks like maybe the Edmontosaurus is kind of wearing sleeves because the front legs are a totally different color than the rear legs. But with that said, I still actually think in person the color scheme is a lot more appealing to me than I expected it to be, and I do really quite like it actually, just a ton more than I was expecting to. And we also have the addition of painted nails on the rear foot, which is a huge, huge plus if you ask me. The only other real downside to the figure that I can think of is the noise department because the noises are absolutely not the type of noises you would hear from a herbivore. They definitely sound like a carnivore type noise, and that is a good bit of a downside, especially when you're going to get a sound strike figure, a dinosaur that makes sound. You really do want the sound of the dinosaur to sound similar to what you would expect to come from that species, and that is not at all what we hear with this figure. The actual action feature, although it's okay, I mean, it's nothing great. It, I feel like maybe just having a posable neck and maybe making this just articulate with sort of a swivel on the neck and giving a really nice posability factor to the figure would have been much better than the actual action feature that we have here because I really feel like the action feature isn't that appealing and not really much can be done with it. I would have actually probably rather maybe they had done like a button on the top which caused the tail to swing similar to I think the Parasaurolophus had that because then it would have like a defense mechanism whereas now it just kind of makes the dinosaur rock out and headbang a little bit so it doesn't really serve too much of a purpose, but I mean, I guess it is what it is. It's still a decent action feature. They just could have done better. The noise is definitely not very good. It could have been a lot better. And then, of course, the sculpting of the feet 
being inaccurate. The front feet we can get past because the discovery of the hooves is kind of like a newer thing. It was, I think, only discovered it near the end of last year, so it's not even that old. But the rear legs, it's just there's not really any excuse for the crazy idea of sculpting out four toes. But again, aside from those issues, I personally do really quite like it. I like the paint scheme. I like the detailing. I overall do quite like this figure. So if you would like to pick this up, as I said, it just started to hit Walmarts in my area. And my Walmart never gets anything new ever. So there's a pretty good chance that your Walmart may actually have this in stock currently. So make sure you check your local Walmart or check online. You may be able to order it from time to time on Amazon or Entertainment Earth. Regardless, even though it has a lot of problems, it's still a really cool Edmontosaurus figure. And I definitely recommend picking it up. So, happy hunting guys, I hope you can in fact acquire one of these, and also before you go, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of any future videos, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.